Hey y'all, this is Chanel Fortney, and this is the Nerd in Texas podcast, the show about movies, books, TV shows, the occasional comedy, and anything you might consider nerdy. So if you like to literally Netflix and chill, stay tuned with me. Hey y'all, um, it is Thursday night, Friday morning, if you want to get technical. Um, I can never sleep. So, I am up late recording this podcast and just, I don't know, recording this podcast. Um, so, some news is that I'm getting a new microphone so you won't have to listen to me in this Xbox headset anymore. <laughs> and um, I'm going to try and do YouTube videos as my podcast, but it's a little outside my comfort zone. But I'm going to try. I'm going to give it a go, see how I feel, see how I like it. And if I like it, then I'll keep doing it. If not, then I'll just keep doing this podcast. Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to those who listen to me. It definitely makes me feel special. This isn't anything that I'm trying to, like, go viral or bring anything big. I am literally in quarantine with nothing to do. So, I don't know. I decided that this would give me something to do. Um, So, with that, I post everything on YouTube. If you could like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I mean, I know it's just listening to me talk, and it's not really videos, but that would be awesome. If you could like and subscribe or follow me on Spreaker, which is just what I'm on. I go live sometimes, so you can chat with me in the chat. I can't wait for, like, when I can actually do that. I got my first request, which that is working I'm on tonight. I am going to do a Dare Me spoilers version of a podcast where I get into a little more depth about Dare Me. I talk about what happens with the, sh- like with the show on Netflix and with the book, because ne- Dare Me is a book. But it's going to be, like, the Audible version, because I I listen to Audible versions of books. I don't really have time to read anymore, which really sucks, because I love to read. But anyways, let's dive into it. So, we already know that Dare Me is based on Megan Abbott's acclaimed crime novel. It follows a fraught relationship between two best friends and their charismatic new cheer coach that arrives. And this cheer coach is extremely toxic. So I'm kind of going to break it down by character. This cheer coach, um, she's kind of like, I don't know, she is very driven which is good she wants to get the girls to like the state championships and get them winning because the team and the coach before her nothing ever happened it was just kind of a crap team and Beth took over and she's like I said she's extremely toxic and has a way of getting Addie to do things that Addie shouldn't be doing and Especially a teenager. Sorry, I just like hiccuped, but tried to hide it. I hope I hit it. Anyways, so with that said, I'm going to go on to Addie. Addie is kind of a, a vulnerable teenager. She is one of the best, like one of the good girl, the when it comes to being an athlete, she's like one of the best cheerleaders on the squad, but she's very easily persuaded. Like, she always has to have someone be her queen bee to to tell her what to do or where to go or who to be. And that was Beth for the longest time. And then insert Coach French, which is Coach Colette. And so she kind of gets herself into hot water by just following Colette around like she starts babysitting her daughter while coach French goes and has an affair with Will and we will talk about Will later and it kind of becomes like a a daily thing a nightly thing where she's kind of coach French uses Addie so she can go and have this affair 
But at the same time, Addie kind of gave her the idea. Gave her the, like, it's okay, I'll watch your daughter, you go meet, go see Will. Because she has this idea that, like, they were in love when they were teenagers but never had a chance. And now French is married, so they still don't have this chance. And they just, I don't know, on a whim, just go do it and they go and have this affair. So now we're going to move on to Beth. Beth was the queen bee for Addie for a long time. She would, she's very disturbed, not disturbed, um, she's had a lot of crappy things happen to her in her past, and with her, her dad cheated on her mom, and not only cheated on her mom, but left her mom for this other woman who lives next door. So she, when she walked, well not next door, across the street, my bad. So when she walks outside, she gets to see her dad walking outside of the home and having a family with someone else because they had a daughter. They had a daughter that's a little bit younger than Beth and is kind of always competing Beth when competing with Beth when it comes to being a cheerleader. She's definitely a whiny little princess because her Beth's dad has money and just kind of like fixes the problem with money. Um... So she kind of, so Beth kind of gets in trouble as much as possible for that attention. Now with Sergeant Will, Sergeant Will is a Marine who hangs out at the high school to recruit high school students. So as he recruits these students, he also gets to know them on a personal level and also kind of like um, protects them a little bit. And falls in love, like, he's, I guess he's always been in love with her, but it's not until later on that you find out that he had a wife, and I think a kid, I'm not sure, and they died in a car accident while he was overseas, and that doesn't get revealed until, like, the last episode, I believe. So what happens? What happens in this series that's, like, so bad, that's so crazy? Um, there's a whole lot of small things that happen that's kind of crazy, like Beth and Addie and some of the cheerleading girls has a party with Sergeant Will's other Marine buddies, and they're, of course, they're all underage girls, and these are all older Marines, and so they're all getting drunk and doing crazy things, and Beth um, it, they don't really, like, she doesn't really come out and say that she was raped, but you get the impression, and she kind, like, just, she has clues, and she, she's a very, like, takes pictures of everything, videos of everything, and one of the rules where no cameras at this party with the Marines, well, afterwards, she takes pictures, and it's kind of evidence that this guy raped her. And so Will, Sergeant Will, kind of finds out about it and gets in a huge fight with him. And what I mean is like punch out, knock out, dragged out fight, you know, outside the bar, just punching each other type of stuff. Well then, Addie gets a call. And then, and actually let me rewind a bit. Will starts to kind of fly off the handle. He starts to kind of lose it when he fi figures out that Coach French is not going to leave her husband for him. And there's times where he just shows up and you know, they do their thing. They go in the room and she has sex with him or whatever just to get him to go away. Which is technically, well yeah, it is rape because she didn't want to do it. She did it just to get him to leave. So, then they get in the bar fight, then Addie gets a phone call in the middle of the night, and it's Coach French, and she's like, you need to get over here right now. So she goes to C Sergeant Will's apartment, and he is found dead in his apartment. And so, Addie is there with Co French, like Coach French, and is like, what happened, what the heck, and 
just has all these questions. Why did you bring me here? Which is a good question. Like, there's a lot of things in this movie that actually doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I'll take over that in a minute. But, so, Addie's mom is actually a police officer. So the what I thought was, like, okay, maybe she brought her here to get, like, maybe a what would a police officer do kind of reaction or insight or I don't know um but really like it was like you showed up here okay now you have to leave like she's trying to kick her out trying to say that Will committed suicide and she just found him like that and and of course you know it's anyone knows that <laughs> if someone says it's suicide and the other person's like okay well let's call the police and they're like no we can't that's a giveaway that that person just murdered that other person but that's just me. And of course when I'm watching this episode, I'm full on like Dexter mode like to get rid of the body, they need to do this and they need to do that and they need to do that. <laughs> and to make it like they weren't there, they need to do this and they need to do that. Because one of the things is this is like a brand new apartment and not a whole lot of people are there, but they that live there. And that's another thing. If he got shot or because he shot himself, he shot himself in the head. Um there is some people who lived on his floor. How come nobody heard a gunshot? And I'm sure Coach Collette doesn't know anything about guns. And if she did shoot him, it was probably like the worst gun you could probably have. Had a lot of kick to it. Probably really loud. <laughs> I'm trying really not to get myself in like on anybody's radar because I know a lot about guns and I watch way too many murder documentaries. Um, anyways, so that's another thing that doesn't make sense. How come nobody heard a gunshot? But that's just me. <laughs> Again, um, so then the events that kind of unfold is Addie starts to lose her mind. Like, she just saw, witnessed some, witnessed the murder, but just saw someone murdered or dead or whatever, and she just can't get it out of her mind. She starts losing it at school. She faints in the middle of class, and Coach Colette is nowhere to be found. She doesn't show up. And when she did show up at practice, she was really late, and she was treating Addie like crap and just blowing her off and not helping the situation at all and so Addie would show up at her house and be like you need to talk to me and of course Coach French is like um no I don't need to talk to you you don't need to be here and that's another thing like that's a that's one whole other thing that how to get on someone's radar is if you're gonna let this cheerleader come over and babysit your kid and then the next minute be like nope you can't be here that's a red flag right there God, I know way too much about this. <laughs> Anyways. So, um, the way it ends is Coach's husband is actually out of town for a little while. And then he comes back. And what happened was Addie gave Coach French a bracelet. That was a bracelet that actually Beth gave to Addie. Because they're your best friends. They've been best friends for a long time. Well, Beth figures out that Addie gave it to Coach French. And so the very end of the episode, um, with Coach French treating Addie like crap, Addie starts putting things together. Like, having, starting really thinking about the crime scene. Really thinking about what was there. Because Addie sneaks into the crime scene. And starts talking to... No, Beth sneaks into the crime scene and starts talking to Addie about it. And Addie's trying to make it seem like she wasn't there. And she has no idea about what happened to Will. And so she, here's Beth asking questions that only someone who is at the crime scene would know. So Beth tells her, like, I know you were there. And my, like, the bracelet I gave you was at the crime scene. It was there. And so Addie's just like, oh crap. Kind of like mind blown. Like I'm, you know, freaking out. 
So Addie goes to Coach French and is like, so where's the bracelet that I gave you? And Coach French realizes she doesn't have the bracelet. And so Coach French is freaking out, tearing up the house, tearing up her bedroom, looking for this bracelet. And her husband, whose name is Matt, is like, what's the problem? And she tells him, the bracelet's missing. I think we left it at Will's. And then you realize, mind blown, Matt knows about Will and that he's dead and that he's what that they that they were having an affair the whole time. Like he knows. So then you realize, did Matt kill him? Did Beth kill him? Or did Coach French kill him? And then. Matt helped her husband Matt helped cover it up because now Addie starts thinking about all these things with the crime scene like if you just showed up here and he was already dead why was your hair wet because she jumped in the shower and took a shower why are you taking a shower (laughs) why do you have like you know and there's also all these other things that she starts to realize so that's when it ends that's when the show ends is when you realize that Matt knew about it all along and so you're like what where is season 2 I need more info this is ridiculous and then you find out there is no season 2 because the show got cancelled and so many people are trying to get Netflix to pick it up so they can continue it so um, oops, sorry, I accidentally hit it. I don't real like, I have theories, but it's also a book, so I already know what happens. In the book, Beth kind of, kind of, um, well, first of all, Beth didn't buy Coach Collette's act. She was like, I know you're a lying piece of poo and I'm going to prove it to everyone and she is like I am going to prove that you killed Will and this is how I'm going to prove it and she does like she does have all this proof and sorry so she does have all this proof and something happens I forgot what because I read it a long time ago that the cheer squad kind of turns against Beth because she does something really bad. I forgot what it was. Um, you also find out that Beth is the one that told Matt about Will and Coach French having an affair because Beth took video of them at a high school party one time. Um, again... Why is a cheer coach at a high school party? That's another thing that doesn't make sense. Anywho. Um, so, in the book, the squad kind of goes against Beth. And Beth is a very self-destructive type of personality. Where she will hurt herself or she will do whatever to get attention from everybody else. So, If you know cheerleading, you know they have those big pyramids where they lift girls up really high and they do flips and they do jumps. And she's one of the best flyers. And she purposefully falls while they're doing a pyramid and almost dies. So, Addie kind of goes, not goes ballistic, but also kind of starts to lose it. But... Now Addie becomes the cheer like the captain of the cheerleading squad and she becomes the woman on top. And so with all of this kind of crazy stuff going on and Coach Collette finally feels guilt and turns herself in and is like, Yeah, this is I killed I killed him my I don't I don't remember what she says if she like if she turns her husband in or not and then at the end they kind of make it like this was Addie's plan all along was to get rid of Coach Colette to get rid of Beth 
so she could now become the woman on top. Um, me, personally, I would have done the story a little bit different because of the way Coach Colette is, or Coach French, whatever you want to call her. She's not the type of person to feel guilt. She's not the type of person to... Like, at least when season one, the way she is, when she starts treating Addie like crap, she's not the type... Like, my personal opinion is she had Addie show up at the crime scene so she could pin it on her. So she can make it look like Addie did it. Um, Another thing that happens at the end of the episode is... Addie had her cheer shoes on, and if you know anything about cheer, they have to be white and clean all the time. And she stepped in Coach Will's blood. So they do what they can to scrub it out. They put it in a trash bag, and she puts it in her closet. Well, her mom, who's a police officer, opens the bag and finds the shoes at the end of the episode, end of the season. So you're like, oh, her mom's finally putting it together. And then it ends. And so you're just like, oh. just can't catch a break but um I personally if I wrote the story I would have not had call it like come forward and say she did it I mean and she sees him like the, if she's going to pin it on a high school cheerleader there's no way she would have come forward she would have like Beth almost dies I'm sure she would have like tried to frame it on Beth she would have figured out a way to try and pin it on somebody else if she couldn't pin it on Abby. So that's the deal. Like like I said, it's a book, so I can't really have any theories. It's already written out there for you. But that's the way I would have done it. So, thank you for listening to me talk about more in-depth of Dare Me. It's been... Thanks for listening to me for the past 20 minutes. Um... Thank you for listening to me in general. You don't have to, but you are, and you're amazing, and I love you. If you have anything you want me to watch, um, one person said that they uh, brought up the Sabrina the Teenage Witch series, the new one, the, so I'm going to do a podcast about that. I'll probably do it in the... I'm getting a new mic on Friday, so I'll probably wait until Friday so I can see, so I can play with my new toy see how good it sounds hopefully it works better than the mac the mic that didn't work so here we go i'm in quarantine message me seriously i'm on twitter i'm on instagram i'm on facebook i'm on all the social medias and i need suggestions so get at me thank you for listening to me this is me signing off